VBA. Control shift enter or a macro wave. Well, there's my G on the CSE. Billy J getting down with the VBA. Oh my, it's a dual and XL time. Stand by, it's a dual and XL time. Oh my, it's dual and XL time. Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 167. Which arrays have every integer from 1 to 199? All right, here's a question that was sent in. It was actually uh, saying, hey, which of your books would have a formula that would explain this? And I said, well, clearly, uh, all the books that, we, that I've written or that I've published, this would have to be Mike Gervin's book. And the question is, I have a whole bunch of data sets. Each row is a data set. Uh, there are, I think, about 300 data points going across, numbers from 1 to 99. And we want to identify which rows have every possible number from 1 to 99. Uh, we want a formula to identify those rows. And so, uh, you know, I thought of VBA, but I said, before I try VBA, let me see if any of Mike's book has sunk in enough uh, that I can write a array formula that would do this. And so, what I thought about is using equal sum ifs, no, count ifs, and the criteria range is we want to look through all of those values in this row, so comma, and then what do I want to look up? I want to look up uh, every number from 1 to 99. And so, I'm going to create an array here. I'm going to coerce an array out of this. I'm going to say the row of dollar sign one colon dollar sign ninety nine um, should pop out an array from one to ninety nine. And what I expect, if I would press Control Shift Enter here, is I'm going to get the count ninety nine different counts. How many times did the number one appear? How many times did the number two appear? How many times did the number three appear? And so on. And if every number is there at least once, then the minimum of this would be one. All right. So I'm going to wrap that whole thing in a wrapper function. So right after the equal sign, I put my wrapper function, the min, open paren, out here, close paren, control, shift, enter. All right, so that one has a match. Let's double click to shoot that down. And it looks like we have a match in row 4, row 5, row 11, row 15. All right, let's see how this is actually working when we look at it in formulas, evaluate formula. All right, so yeah, that's perfect. The first thing it does, and this is what I never know. I mean, when I press Control Shift Enter, how does Excel know if this is the array or if that's the array? But somehow here, I'm just going to call it uh, just pure magic, right? It figured out that that's the array. So when I evaluate that, sure enough, it turns it into an array of the numbers 1 through 99. And then when it does the count ifs, it's going to tell me how many times each of those numbers appear. So the number 1 appears four times, two times, three times, three times. All right, and there are no zeros there, so every number is represented at least once, sometimes more than once, but at least once. Send that whole thing through to the, the min, and we get a 1. But we'll come down here, do the exact same thing, evaluate formula, evaluate, evaluate, and you can see somewhere, like right about there, somewhere in the middle, also right there, there is a digit that did not manage to show up. So then the min of that is 0. All right, so just an easy, easy way using min and count ifs. Uh, to say if each number is there. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, that's a great array formula. I'm going to do some VBA. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do any VBA. I don't even know how to do VBA. Mr. Excel, that is an awesome formula. How beautiful is that? It does exactly what we want. One, they're all there. Zero, hey, I found a zero, so at least one of them's not there. Now, that's a beautiful formula. You asked, hey, how does the formula know when there's an array? Hey, I'm just going to look at the argument. It says range, right? So then, of course, it's not an array. Actually, that is kind of true. There's a bunch of arguments that say range. But really, what's happening is count ifs is an aggregate function. It gives you a single answer, right? We give it that there, and it knows it's a range. But here's how it knows. When you are using functions, and you have a function argument that's expecting a single item, we gave it a bunch of items items. Instead of a single cell or an empty argument, we gave it like 16,000 
columns times 99 rows, that's a lot of stuff there. So what happens when you give an argument more than one item is an expecting a single item, boom, when we evaluate it, it spits out multiple items. So the key to an array operation is you're doing an operation on multiple items. In this case, it's a function argument array operation. And when you calculate it, it spits out a bunch of answers, a resultant array. Now, the cool thing about this format is not only is the row doing an array operation, but count ifs is also that criteria argument right there. In fact, if you give criteria one, criteria two, if you give one of them more than one criteria, it does or criteria. So it's literally saying, is there a one? Is there a two? Or it's counting how many ones are there, or how many twos are there, or how many threes there are. So check that out. That criteria argument right there, we gave it 1 to 99. So now the count ifs is instructed. Criteria 1 is expecting a single answer. We give it multiple items. So when count ifs evaluates, it also spits out a resultant array, which then the min looks at. In our case, it finds the smallest is 1, so we know they're all there. All right, so I'm going to escape and go over to the sheet here. Now, I'm going to actually do just about the same formula, except for I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I'll go arrow, arrow, control, shift, right arrow, control, backspace, comma. And then this row right here, I, I, I kind of like this, 1 colon 99 F4, except for it kind of makes me nervous to highlight 16,000 or way more than a lot, that many cells. And um, I don't think we'll get in trouble here with it, but it certainly makes me nervous. So I'm going to try the another alternative for generating an array of sequential numbers. We'll use row, and then inside row, we'll use indirect. And then indirect can take a text string that represents a reference and converts it back to a reference. And then row will look at that and convert it to rows 1 to 99. So if you hit F9, you can see it's right there. Now, the indirect is a volatile function, so it might be just as bad as highlighting all those cells. Hey, but I'm going to close parentheses on the main, close parentheses. And if I don't want to use Control Shift Enter, if I evaluate either Mr. Excel's rows or this, or type it out, You'd never want to type it out. You just do this and then hit F9. Hey, I'm just going to hard code it in there as an array, right? It, if you don't need to look at it or, or even if for whatever reason, I kind of like this. Most situations when you actually hard code your array in like this, called an array constant, the formula won't require Control-Shift-Enter. So I'm going to Control-Enter double click and send it down. And it will work the same. All right, uh, throw back to Mr. Excel. I, I have a sneaking suspicion there are not just two ways to do it, but probably a bunch of cool ways. Hey, how sweet is that? An explanation from the author of the book about how it figures out which the array is. So, you know, another way that I thought to do this, again, not with VBA, but just with uh, an array formula, would be to do a match. And I want to do a match of everything from 1 to 99. I like your F4 trick there. Uh, and I want to do a match into that array, comma, 0, because we want an exact match. And what's that going to do? That's going to say, hey, if the number 1 is found, it's going to tell me where it is. But if the number 1 is not found, it's going to return an NA error. And the thing about NA errors is if you add up 500 cells, and they're all numeric, except there's one NA, then the answer is going to be NA. So if I throw that match into a sum function, put a parenthesis at the end, and I'm going to try Mike's trick here, where I take this row 1 to 99, and press F9 to embed an array constant in there. Then I should just be able to press Enter if Mike is correct. All right, so because I got a number there, that means that they're all found. Uh, so anytime I get a number, it doesn't matter what the number is, those items are all found. And when I have an NA, that means there's at least one item missing. Mike, back to you. Bill, Mr. Excel, Array Formula Master Jellen, that's your new name. Look at that, that's another amazing 
function argument array operation. Oh, man. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to use the same. Actually, you know, I really wanted to use frequency. Now, frequency would do something similar, right? We give it the data array, and here's the bins arrays. That's 1 to 99. It would count between these bins here and give us the same numbers that count if, except for one thing. The bins, if you give it all these categories here, it always creates one more not greater than 99. So in some cases, we'll get the wrong answer. Oh, man. So I'm going to stick with this count ifs here. And instead of using min or converting this to an array constant, I'm going to use the aggregate. Pretty much whenever you're doing min or max with an array calculation, you can use aggregate and avoid the special keystroke control shift enter. Now, functions 1 to 13 do not allow array operations. But look at that. 14 and 19 do, and we want 15. That's small comma. In this case, we want to ignore nothing. So we put a 4 comma. There's one of only four functions that have a magic argument that can handle array operations without Control Shift Enter. So I'm going to come to the end, comma, and the K for small, which means min. We just put one close parentheses and Control Enter. I don't see any curly brackets up there. Double click and send it down. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, all right, aggregate. That is a great trick. You know, I always wonder why the first 11 or 12 or 13, they don't allow arrays. That would have been cool. Why did they only do it on the new ones, the things that weren't in subtotals? Well, hey, uh, you know, enough of these array formulas. Let's just go back to the thing that I know and love, and that would be a little bit of VBA. So I wrote a function called all there, all there, where I can specify uh, those values. And if everything is there, it returns the, the text all there. But if it's not, if it's not, then it shows you which items are missing. Let's take a look at the code I uh, used to do this. Uh, so function, I call the function all there, and I'm passing it a range. Uh, and then I created a variable uh, with the numbers I'm looking for, 1 to 99 as an integer. I loop through each cell in the range. And uh, if uh, there, so let's say the first cell has the number 27. So it's setting the 27th uh, value of the there array equal to 1. Why the on error resume next? Well, I actually realized that there is some data out here that is outside of the range, like right there, uh, Q5. Somehow we have, we have data that's not in the uh, 1 to 99 range. And that was me when I created this. I must have done a bad ran between. I have no idea how I did that. So uh, just in case we get an illegal value, uh, we're going to deal with that. And then I build my answer. So all there starts out with the word missing. I go from the numbers 1 to 99 and look in the array called there. If it's not equal to 1, then I append uh, whatever was in all there before with that number and then a comma space. All right, do that whole loop, all 99. And then, you know, I look to see that it's possible that all of them were found. And if all of them were found, then the length of all there is going to be these nine characters, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if it's uh, 9, then I know that there was nothing found. And I change the answer from missing to just simply say all there. Now, if there were some items and we you know, concatenated together a few different things, like here, there's going to be a comma space after the 76 or a comma space after the 92. So I want to take the answer that's stored in the all there variable, take the left of it, the entire length of all there, minus 2 to get rid of that final comma space at the end. And uh, you know, simple enough to build this formula, equal all there, control shift right arrow, close paren, enter, and it figures out the answer. Mike, back to you. Oh my heavens, talk about reigning supreme. I'm going to give you three points. You did the count if and min, the match sum, and now this. Now, there might be a formula that could do that, but you'll have to do, you know, use the mon concatenate uh, add in function or something to join these multiple items. So I'm not going to even do that. Um, I, that's amazing. VBA wins here, of course. If we were going to do something with an if, I could use this as given one or zero if the logical test understands zero as false and one or any non zero number as true. So if that's a non-zero number, I'm going to say all there. 
Otherwise, I don't know VBA. That's just a joke there. You put something better there. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Lots of I don't know VBAs. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. All right, Mike, that was great. What a, a fun duel going back and forth. And of course, this duel uh, is really a sales pitch for your book, Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel at Ray Formulas. Because, you know, I picked up that book, I read that book, and while I always could do a couple of simple little nominal array formulas, I've really started to to uh, learn enough from that book to be able to pull out a few good things. And of course, if you want to go the VBA way, uh, then my book VBA and Macros for Microsoft Excel 2013. So hopefully everyone uh, picked up a few good tricks here. And the great news, the person who wrote to me last weekend said, hey, if I buy Mike's book, will I be able to, to do uh, this type of, uh, of problem solving? Absolutely, the answer is yes. All right, well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun. It's Dueling Excel time.